Welcome to the world of material science. My name is Professor Bonnet. In this video, we will explore the exciting class of high alloy steel, and here we will focus on stainless high alloy steel. A little over 100 years ago, it was discovered that chromium at about 12 mass percent, alloy content and above, can significantly increase the corrosion resistance of steel. In 1912, the first 18.8 CRNI stainless steel was patented by the Krupp company. The usual unalloyed and low alloyed steel is practically not resistant in corrosive environments. For the formation of a protective passive layer, the steel must theoretically be alloyed with at least 10.5% chromium. In practice, therefore, the chromium content should generally be above 13%. Above this chromium content, a chromium oxide layer of a few nanometers thickness forms under almost all ambition conditions. This dense, tough and adherent thin layer makes the steel corrosion resistant, at least under atmospheric conditions. After a mechanical injury, in the presence of oxygen, this protective layer is rebuilt in about 10 milliseconds. This is called repassivation. The passive layer consists mainly of chromium oxide with oxides of other alloying elements, if any are present. The resistance of stainless steel is determined by the stability of their passive layer. That is to say, by the exact alloy composition, the surface condition and the microstructure. Therefore, careful material selection and processing is critical for good corrosion resistance. Already in the videos on designation of steel, we learned about material numbers as a second designation in addition to abbreviated designations. We learned that the number one stands for the material steel. The two following digits usually allow conclusions to be drawn about the alloy structure. For example, 43 stands for chromium steel with a nickel content greater than 2.5%. The last two digits are sequence numbers for the steel belonging to this group. Especially in the field of high alloy steel, working with material numbers is common, as the short designations can sometimes be very long. This table lists the alloy structure according to the material group number. All steel with a group number 40 or 41 a high alloy steel with low nickel content. Compared with group 40, group 41 also contains molybdenum. The situation is similar for group 43 and 44, both of which have a nickel content of greater than 2.5%. The types with special additives such as stabilizers are found in group 45 and 46. And in groups 47 and 48, the heat resistant high alloy steel without or with appreciable nickel content. In addition to alloy developments, the optimization of cost-effective manufacturing processes in particular has led to a large number of stainless steel types. They are divided into different grades according to their microstructures as follows. Ferritic steel, martensitic steel, austenitic steel and austenitic ferritic steel. Which microstructure is produced in the respective high alloy steel depends primarily on the main alloying constitutions and, if applicable, the heat treatment. The main alloying element of a high alloy stainless steel, as we have already learned, is chromium. If chromium is the only main alloying element, a ferritic microstructure will result. For martensitic hardening, sufficient amounts of carbon or nickel are also required. If nickel is added to chromium in sufficient quantities, the austenite is stable even at low temperatures and we obtain austenitic stainless steel. Sometimes a combination of properties between ferritic and austenitic microstructure is desired, in which case an austenitic ferritic microstructure can also be obtained with higher chromium and lower nickel contents. 
The influence of the chemical, chemical composition on the normally expected microstructure of the matrix is shown by the so-called Scheffler diagram. The nickel equivalent versus the chromium equivalent are plotted here. Nickel and chromium are present in these steel grades in significant mass contents. Nickel is an austenite former, while chromium is a ferrite former. In the so-called nickel equivalent, carbon and manganese, which additionally promote austenite formation, are included proportionally. It is calculated as percent nickel plus 30 times percent carbon plus 0.5 times percent manganese. Likewise, the chromium equivalent includes the ferrite forming elements molybdenum, silicon, niobium and titanium proportionally. It is calculated as percent chromium plus percent molybdenum plus 1.5 times percent silicon plus 0.5 times percent niobium plus 2 times percent titanium. If the nickel equivalent is plotted against the chromium equivalent, for stainless steel in a diagram according to Scheffler, the respective according microstructural proportions of martensite, austenite and ferrite can be read. Ferritic steel typically has chromium contents of 11 to 18 mass percent and is not infrequently optimized with molybdenum or other add additives. The mechanical properties of ferritic steel require a fine-grained uniform microstructure, which is adjusted by appropriate heat treatment. The yield strength corresponds to those of normal structural steel, such as an S235JR. At room temperature, the steel exhibits adequate toughness. At low temperatures, toughness is low. Corrosion resistance is limited due to the relatively low chromium content. Higher chromium contents and the addition of 1% molybdenum improve corrosion resistance as already mentioned. Possible coarse grain formation during welding is reduced by additions of molybdenum or aluminum. Thus stainless ferritic steel represents an economical solution in application areas of low corrosion stress with interesting values up to 300 MPa for the 0.2% yield strength and up to 650 MPa for the tensile strength. However, elongations at break of around 20% indicate only moderate toughness and the tendency of the ferritic microstructure to brittleness in the cold should not be ignored either. Reasons for using martensitic steel besides corrosion resistance are the high strength and hardness achievable by heat treatment. Therefore, due to wear resistance, they are used as rolling, bearing material and for knives with good edge retention. Hardness or strength increases with increasing carbon content. However, since steel is very brittle in the hardened state, a tempering treatment is usually still carried out. This reduces hardness and strength but increases toughness. Depending on the carbon and or nickel content, yield strength of up to 1000 MPa and tensile strength of up to 1200 MPa result. The hardness can be up to 60 HRC. Corrosion resistance is highly dependent on the tempering treatment as more chromium carbides are formed as the tempering temperature increases. This removes chromium from the matrix causing the corrosion resistance to drop. However, we will discuss this intergranular corrosion in more detail in following videos on corrosion. Nickel martensitic steel is appreciably ductile even at high strengths with impact work greater than 40 joule because unlike ferritic and martensitic steel with higher carbon contents, it does not exhibit a pronounced temperature dependence of notched impact strengths. That is to say, it can also be used at lower temperatures. Austenitic stainless steel is the most widely used 
of the stainless steel types in terms of volume. With a wide variety of additives, most corrosion resistance requirements can be satisfied. Chromium nickel steel with pure arsenitic microstructure is very workable and can be found in many areas of daily life. Without molybdenum, this steel is used in areas with low requirements for corrosion resistance in households, in ar architecture, as aesthetic uh, visible parts inside and outside. Molybdenum containing arsenitic steel must be used in cases with unfavorable exposure to industrial air when the road salt is used in winter or near the sea. However, how a high alloy special steel is also available for projects in the chemical industry in the fields of seawater desal desalination, environmental technology and offshore technology with the highest corrosive load. Arsenitic steel thus offers a favorable combination of workability such as forming, welding or machining, mechanical properties and good corrosion resistance. As with ferritic steel, a fine-grained microstructure is a basic requirement for good technological properties. A homogeneous, precipitation-free microstructure is achieved by a final heat treatment. This solution annealing is carried out, as we have already learned in the videos on heat treatment of steel, at high temperatures of 1000 to 1150 degrees Celsius, with subsequent accelerated cooling in water. Arsenitic steel is not hardenable compared to metancitic steel. However, an increase in strength can be realized via strain hardening. Strength can also be increased by adding nitrogen in small amounts of 0.1 to 0.3 percent. Yield strength values of up to 400 MPa can be achieved. Further, noteworthy are the extremely favorable toughness properties which are maintained even at low temperatures. Stainless steel with arsenitic ferritic microstructure is often called duplex stainless steel. Earlier problems in welding processing are now solved by adding nitrogen. The main advantage of ferritic arsenitic steel over arsenitic steel is that the 0.2% yield strength is at least twice as high. This helps users of pressure vessels by reducing wall sickness or brings significant cost advantages in transport containers through weight savings. It also gives rise to interesting applications for the construction industry, such as the elevator tower made of duplex steel tubes shown here. Arsenitic ferritic steel has become increasingly important in the past 20 years because it combines good corrosion resistance with high strength values. As mentioned, the minimum yield strength of 380 MPa is twice that of normal arsenides. Nevertheless, good toughness properties are achieved. Duplex stainless steel is also finally solution annealed to achieve a uniform microstructure with 50% ferrite and 50% arsenide. This steel has proved particularly effective in media containing chlorides, seawater chemicals, etc. The addition of molybdenum, manganese, copper, nitrogen and tungsten further increase corrosion resistance. The term stainless steel is associated with use in atmospheric conditions up to slightly higher temperatures. For applications in hot gases, we refer to heat resistant steel. In the case of heat-resistant steel, the setting of metastable microstructures such as martensite is not possible due to the high operating temperatures. Therefore, only the two types, ferritic steel and arsenitic steel, are commonly used. In terms of quantity, heat-resistant ferritic steel only makes up a small group but it is superior to nickel-bearing materials under certain service conditions. Scale limit temperatures range from 800 to 1100 degrees Celsius, depending on chromium content, which ranges from 7 to 25 percent. However, heat-resistant ferritic steels 
tendency to embrittlement limits the product range to thin, hot and cold rolled strips. Compared to heat resistant ferritic steel, heat resistant austenitic steel is easier to produce, easier to process and also has a lower tendency to embrittlement. With different alloy contents operating temperatures of 850 to 1125 degrees Celsius can be realized. Applications from roll sheets, strip and profile range from automotive to process industries. We have already mentioned several times the strong influence that alloying elements have on the formation of the crystal structure and the resulting properties. I would like to summarize the most important alloying elements again here. Chromium is present in common stainless and heat resistant steel at about 13 to 30 mass percent, as it is the basis of corrosion resistance of stainless steel. It is one of the strong ferrite formers. Iron chromium alloys are therefore also ferritic. Molybdenum, which greatly improves corrosion resistance in reducing media and especially against pitting corrosion in solutions containing um, halides, also has a ferrite forming effect. However, in heat resistant steel, molybdenum worsens scale resistance. Silicon is also a ferrite former and is usually present in steel at less than 1% by mass. As a targeted alloying element, silicon essentially serves to bind oxygen, a process known as deoxidation. Titanium and niobium are used in stainless steel for stabilization, that is to say for the bonding of the strong austenite formers carbon and nitrogen. Nickel along with chromium is the most important alloying element in austenitic steel and has strong austenite forming properties. By adding about 8% nickel a steel with 18 mass percent chromium is austenitic even at room temperature. Manganese has a slight austenizing effect up to contents of 2% by mass. Carbon and nitrogen are strong austenitizing formers. Carbon, however, greatly deteriorates the corrosion resistance of steel, whereby nitrogen improves the strength characteristics of austenitic steel. In addition to mechanical properties, other physical properties are important for the calculation and design of components and equipment. For example, the thermal expansion and thermal conduction under changing thermal conditions are often of interest. The density for all steel is between 7.7 .7 and 8.1 gram per cubic centimeter, influenced by the level of the respective alloying constitutions. The, co the coefficient of thermal expansion depends on the crystal lattice of the steel in question. The values for austenitic steel are up to 50% higher than those of the other types, while thermal conductivity is highest for the martensitic stainless steel. The question of magnetizability of stainless and heat resistant steel cannot be answered unambitiously for each steel. Basically, ferrites and martensites are ferromagnetic, which means they are attracted to magnets. Martensitic steel is exposed to a magnetic field, can often also exhibit undesirable permanent magnetic behavior. In contrast, the austenitic microstructure is paramagnetic, meaning it cannot be magnetized. Now, we should actually conclude by talking about the chemical properties of stainless steel. But since the core topic here is corrosion resistance, we will cover this in detail in the next videos under the topic corrosion. Thank you very much for watching.